Hi, this is Paul Gregg, and I wanted to document some more of the work I did in 2017. Um, I was working with some MIT students who were thinking about making a Rush Week roller coaster, having the students build it, and, and they built plywood ones in the past, and I was saying, thinking they might build a PVC roller coaster at less cost and uh, maybe a little more interesting. Um, and so we were working, and one of the issues that came up was the the properties of the PVC, especially uh, the impact resistance, uh, the high strain rate sensitivity of the properties. Um, I've found that I'd done some 2014 impact testing and uh, found that it really is a concern. There's a big degradation in in uh, not strength or stiffness. The strength or stiffness actually goes up with time because it, the, the materials continue to cure. But the uh, fracture toughness, which is uh, when something gets hit, it cracks and shatters in a brittle manner. And uh, that's, the, that's the concern, especially be, when you put PVC out in sunlight, which has ultraviolet radiation, and that uh, degrades the, the impact resistance of all, all polymers and, uh, and PVC, including PVC. So this is really my second round of impact tests. I had put uh, a three or four uh, formed curved sections of Schedule 40 and Schedule 80 PVC painted and unpainted out in the sun for 27 months. And uh, so I was interested in getting the, the difference between the impact resistance. Um, this is from an ASTM D2444. It really specifies how to do impact testing. Uh, it's not a Sharpie impact test that engineers might be familiar with. It's, uh, it's more what we do on the wing skins of a composite airplane. Uh, and it's very simple. You, in a con as controlled a manner as you can, you drop a known weight from a known height, and uh, and you see what the damage is. Uh, uh, and that's what I did. So uh, the results are very simple. You take uh, the weight times it by the height, and that's the energy that uh, was used to make a certain impact. So if I had uh, 10 pounds and I dropped it from 120 inches, I would have 1,200 inch pounds of energy that made this damage and either broke it or didn't break it or did something to it. And I have to decide what uh, what criteria I use for what I call damaged. Uh, <clears throat> whether it's a visible damage or barely visible damage, that's a big thing in composites uh, to decide how much internal damage there might be. So you do a lot of this impact testing, and then you do ultrasonic inspection and see if the layers have delaminated. But so that's where I, I was familiar with this test method. I made a little similar test method in my garage and was impacting these pipes. Um, so basically, I got a, a tube of PVC, cut a slit up the side of it so that I could uh, lift it with a screw sticking in my 10 pound weight. Uh, approximately 10 pound weight and put it in my garage vertically hung it from the rafters and uh, would uh, lift it to different heights to get different impact energies um, so I considered uh, impacting in 2014 I just had just laid the pipes on the cement floor and impacted them um, yeah you could like between uh, ties on a roller coaster, you could uh, support this at 16 inches or whatever your tie spacing is. Uh, but I had the feeling that that would take a very, a lot more energy, and I'd have to get a lot bigger weight or a lot taller height to get the same energy levels that would uh, would break that. And and plus, I think uh, uh, a wheel or something impacting the PVC pipe is more of a local uh, thing and so I think this is good enough 
it's and plus I'm really just interested in the relative uh, impact energies between schedule 40 and schedule 80 and painted and unpainted ultraviolet radiation exposed in the sun um, PVC and so I think I can I can draw the comparisons even if the test isn't perfect um, so I used approximately a 10 pound bar and it had a half inch uh, radius ground into the end of it so uh, <clears throat> and like I said the impact energy is calculated uh, simply by multiplying the weight by the drop height in inch pounds uh, I don't have there's another uh, video I'll bring up that's on YouTube, and I'll, I'll put that link in the description. You can s see how these impact. But the interesting thing is, basically, there's two distinct results. Either, either the weight bounces off of the PVC, and there's maybe a scuff mark, but no real damage. And with just a little bit higher energy, it just whacks it, and it shatters like this, like you can see in the picture. And so the trick is you have to do enough tests to know, be pretty certain where that that uh, change occurs. It's a very distinct change. It's not like a little bit of damage and then a little more damage. It's either very little damage or a lot of damage, a big, big uh, shatter, a more brittle-like shatter. So uh, that's our test. And uh, basically up around... Uh, a thousand inch pounds is where this happens for schedule 40 uh, PVC. So I started testing and I did a bunch of these. Uh, I did cut the pipe into what uh, some length, uh, like 14 inch sections or something. And so there was a, a bit of difference between them. Uh, it's probably not ideal, but uh, good enough for, for finding the difference between things between the painted and unpainted and the schedule 40 and schedule 80. So here we go. <clears throat> Basically, these are all the tests I did. These are pristine unpainted, so not aged. And uh, the impact energy was up around 1,000 inch pounds. Uh, and you can see the ones that are a little higher did a big shatter. The ones a little lower than 1,000 inch pounds uh, just made a scuff mark and didn't really do any damage. So that's for schedule 40. <clears throat> then I tested uh, um, painted uh, Schedule 40 pipes after 21 uh, months of UV sun exposure and unpainted ones. So you can see there's a, some degradation uh, after 27 months. And then I'll get to the to the end here. I did some Schedule A, just a couple of Schedule 80s, and, and they I didn't have enough energy to, to break them at all, uh, whether they were painted or unpainted. So, um, results. Uh, the low, I'm taking the lowest failure of a shattered specimen impact energy. The pristine Schedule 40 did about 993 inch-pounds. The ultraviolet sunlight exposed with with without paint uh, degraded down to 530 inch pounds and a lot of people they use PVC in their yard and after a couple of years they they whack it with something and it shatters and they think oh PVC is just always does this it's really bad but if they would paint it they would find that they can uh, <clears throat> increase the um, use of a PVC uh, without painting uh, the impact resistance of the PVC conduit over 27 months of UV was decreased by 46.6%. With painting, the impact resistance is only decreased only by 12.5%. And, and I'm probably being a little conservative there for a couple of reasons. I should have cut the specimens into 12 and 16 inch lengths. Oh, I didn't cut them into 12 to into lengths. I just kept whacking the same pipe and the, the big fracture next to where I was uh, impacting probably had an effect on it. And so <clears throat> the 12.5% knockdown, if you paint them, uh, is probably a little conservative, which is fine. But you can certainly improve it if you paint it. Uh, in painting, um, the trick with painting anything, uh, and PVC especially, is surface preparation. I used acetone or MEK to, to surface prep it, and I used the 
Rust-Oleum Universal spray paint. Nothing, nothing fancy there. Now I have read where um, a darker color is better. This link um, says that to blue and red darker colors uh, protect from UV better. And I'm not, I haven't verified that, but it, it makes sense. <clears throat> so, um, this is a little video I made, which uh, and we will see what happens. In three, two. This is just an introduction. I did a 322 pound test. So, the what you want looking for is where the PVC could get impacted. It doesn't really get impacted by this cart, but if a screw was in the path of the main wheels or the side wheels or the upstop wheels and the screw got impacted by the wheel, then the PVC next to the screw, the PVC that the screw, the hole that it goes through, that metal screw would impact the edge of that hole. And that's really what you're worried about. So the obvious way to avoid this is to make sure that there isn't any way that any of your wheels can impact the, the protruding screw heads. And they are countersunk, but they do protrude a little bit. And if they're not located, uh, you can see the side wheels go on uh, against the side of the pipe. The main wheels go on the upper pipe. And I try to get my screw head sticking out halfway between those two, angled into the center of the wooden tie. And I always countersink them and pre-drill the holes. Um, so, I, in fact, I had a cart uh, at one time that... Uh, I had a little fracture in the around the uh, uh, screw head, and I looked, and the cart, the wheel had. I was fooling around with different kind of wheels, and and the cart, the wheel was able to slip off the side of the track a little bit, and it had impacted that that screw head. So I quit using that concept, and I have um, eight wheel carts now that uh, can be designed so they never impact a screw. So this was a 322 pound test when I was just about to tear down my biggest coaster, the smog coaster, and I was trying to break something with uh, as much weight as I could put on it. So this is 322 pounds, 360 pounds total with the weight of the cart, and I was trying to see if I could what? <laughs> so you'll notice this uh, this cart doesn't make it over the hill there. And uh, interesting side point: the because the the PVC rails have some flexibility, and my eight uh, skateboard wheels on the cart have some flexibility. They are uh, deforming a lot more than if just a seventy-pound kid is riding this roller coaster. They're deforming a lot more with the three hundred twenty-two pounds of rock bags on it, which creates more friction, and so the roller coaster had a lot more drag and it couldn't make it over the the hump of the smog coaster right there it stops um, so here's this little fifth grade version of uh, of my impact uh, testing results so uh, um, kids could who are looking at my videos can understand yeah there's an issue here uh, long-term PVC oh. It's, it, the video is going. So this is my homemade impact setup. It can go up to 1,200 inch pounds. And there are some videos. What I wanted to really show you is uh, the videos that are coming up. There's two results. Either it bounces off or it shatters. Nothing in between. Here's uh, bouncing off. And here is shattering with this a slightly higher impact. You raise it a couple inches. And uh, the results of my 50 tests say there's nearly a 50% uh, knockdown if you don't paint and painting reduces that to under 10. So I think that's all and I know these uh, videos that I make are um, pretty hokey but you know I'm a YouTuber who doesn't have a lot of jumping rabbits and music for you. I just uh, concentrate on content so so Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, unfortunately, YouTube turned off my comments a year ago. I think they thought they were um, aimed toward children. 
And uh, I'd like to have comments turned back on if you can contact, uh, provide feedback to them and ask them why in the world these, uh, these videos, which are aimed at uh, safety for children mainly, are uh, the comments are turned off. And uh, I will try to make two more videos of my uh, interaction with the MIT students in 2017. One of them details a lot of testing on uh, rail to tie joints and improving that weak spot in this whole design. The other one is some uh, ideas for how where to go from here with backyard roller coasters, what we would do at a, in the aerospace if we were going to really put this on an airplane or a rocket or a whatever. Uh, where we would go from there, what kind of testing we do at a, uh, to accomplish, to, to make sure that was safe. So, thanks for listening. Bye.